the revised total coal form rule implementation lessons learned public water system training as of april 1st 2016 all pws's must be in compliance with the rtcr requirements i'm nick schuler through technical assistance i've been helping to standardize and facilitate implementation of the rtcr regulations across the state with this video i'd like to show you what we've learned since the implementation of the rtcr key changes from tcr to rtcr the total coal form rule tcr established a maximum contaminant level mcl based on the presence or absence of total coliforms and also requires sanitary surveys for systems collecting fewer than five samples per month the revised total coliform rule rtcr established a maximum contaminant level for e coli and uses e coli and total coliforms to initiate a find and fix approach to address fecal contamination that could enter into the distribution system. Public water systems, PWSs, must perform assessments to identify sanitary defects and take action to correct them. Some key changes from TCR to RTCR include compliance for total coliform changes from maximum contaminant level to assessment triggers, expansion of the E. coli MCL, changes to additional routine monitoring, and the requirement of seasonal startup certification. There have also been some changes in regards to the mandatory language for public notification, PN, and consumer confidence report, CCR. In the RTCR, total coal form, TC health effects language have changed to show TC as an indicator of the possible presence of contamination. Language for fecal coliforms, E. coli, has been replaced with language for E. coli only. In the TCR, there were no treatment technique, TT, violations. In the RTCR, since there are now level one and level two assessments, there are treatment technique violations for failure to conduct level one or level two assessments within 30 days of an assessment trigger. And failure to correct all sanitary defects within 30 days of assessment after you are made aware of the defect. Today's objectives. Let's examine common problems MassDEP has seen with Level 1 assessments, Level 2 assessments, and corrective action schedules. Assessments. Under RTCR, the monthly MCL for total coliform has been eliminated and replaced with assessment triggers, Level 1s and Level 2s. In order to direct water systems to find and fix problems that might contribute to bacterial contamination. Assessment triggers. Level 1 assessment triggers are caused by a PWS collecting less than 40 samples per month which has two or more total coliform positive routine and or repeat samples in a month. A PWS collecting 40 or more samples in a month which has greater than 5% of the routine and or repeat samples that are total coliform positive. Or a PWS fails to take the required repeat samples after discovering a total coliform positive sample. Level 2 assessment triggers are caused by an E. coli MCL violation, multiple level 1 assessments in a 12-month period, or a PWS on annual monitoring that has a level 1 assessment trigger in two consecutive years. Number of MassDEP level 1 assessments. Notice that MassDEP's Northeast region only has four level 1 assessments as opposed to the Western region's 26. The central region has 37 and the southeast region has 34. This is because the Northeast Regional Office Municipal Systems are predominantly served by Massachusetts Water Resources Authority, MWRA. They also have almost no transient non-community, TNC, and non-transient non-community, NTNC systems, which are disproportionately likely to have bacteria problems and trigger assessments. Number of Mass DEP Level 2 Assessments this slide shows the number of level 2 assessments done by each of the mass DEP regions. As you can see from the numbers in parentheses, many were caused by a second level 1 trigger within 12 months. The other level 2 assessments were caused by an E. coli MCL violation. Level 1 assessments. The level 1 assessment is a self-assessment, so the PWS may review general water system infrastructure and operating and sampling protocols in response to a total coliform bacteria MCL violation. It should be completed by a knowledgeable representative of the water system. This should be someone familiar enough with the system to answer the questions on the level one assessment form or to gather correct information from others who work for the system. 
Common Level 1 Assessment Problems Some common Level 1 assessment problems that MassDEP has noticed include a failure to notify MassDEP of a trigger or late notification. In one region, a submittal was one and a half months late. Other problems include checking no without elaborating, checking and or listing a series of boxes or issues without elaborating, or few or no boxes checked without potential causes identified despite the system taking corrective action. Under the RTCR, MassDEP must be notified of an assessment trigger or late notification. The more information, the better. So elaborating when checking no is important. And not identifying potential causes of contamination should mean taking a closer look at the system. Chlorination or flushing may not solve the problem. Assessors must make sure to fill out the level one form as completely as possible to avoid issues down the line. Corrective actions suggested by the assessors without any commitment or a proposed schedule. Incorrectly stating no issue in last sanitary survey or that an issue was resolved when it was not. Narratives not included in Section B, Issue Description. The instructions mandate that assessors provide collection dates, describe the event, etc. Let's briefly go over the Level 1 Assessment Form. The first page requires basic information such as the PWS ID, PWS name, name of the city or town, etc. There are also six sections labeled General, Operational Changes, Sampling Sites, Sampling Protocol, Treatment Process, and Distribution System. Each section should be answered as best as possible so that any issues can be identified and corrective action can take place as soon as possible. Section 7 and 8 reference storage tanks and sources. Section B, Issue Description, should have a narrative included. Please fill out Section C, Corrective Action, taken as well. Your PWS should have a proposed corrective action schedule, and if you cannot meet that schedule, make sure to contact your local MassDEP office. Section D, Compliance History asks if your PWS was required to complete a Level 1 assessment within the last 12 months. Was the PWS required by MassDEP during the last survey to address any issue? Please answer accurately because corrective actions may become greater issues down the line. They may also lead to a Level 2 assessment in the future. Level 2 Assessments A Level 2 assessment is more in-depth than a Level 1 assessment. They are performed by the state or state-approved entity each time a Level 2 assessment is triggered. The PWS is responsible for ensuring that the Level 2 assessment is conducted regardless of the entity conducting it. The Level 2 form is 12 pages long, so for the sake of this presentation, we will not go into the form in great detail. Common Level 2 Assessment Problems A common Level 2 assessment problem that MassDEP has seen is not completing required Section 12 water quality review. Water quality data should be compiled and evaluated as part of all Level 2 assessments. The data to be reviewed will vary for each situation, but may involve special purpose coliform samples, chlorine residuals, disinfection byproducts, or HPC among others. More common Level 2 assessment problems include not filling out sections of the form in the proper location, in the boxes on the pertinent sheets, and referencing other sections where additional details should be but are not provided. For example, the assessor stated, see action plan, rather than describing the issue in the section of the form. It's often helpful for an assessor to attach documents describing an issue in greater detail, but that assessor may not skip sections not fully detailing identified issues. Some more common level two assessment problems include identifying problems in an earlier section of the assessment without corrective actions, proposing work actions after no sanitary defects found, which may not be the proper action, and not assessing all components of the system. When asked, is the well cap vented and is the vent screened? The answer provided was, could not access well cap. This is not an acceptable response because all components of the system should be able to be accessed. We will not be going over the entire level two assessment form. However, here's what the beginning of the form looks like. Just like the level one form, we ask for basic information of the system. There are also multiple sections to go over. 
At the bottom of the page, you can see that the bold sections are required of all PWSs. Corrective Action Schedules Let's go over some brief tips and issues that have been seen in regards to corrective action schedules. Level 1 and Level 2 Assessment Timelines Notification is required within 5 days of triggering an assessment, but a system should not wait until the last day to provide notification because assessment reports are due 30 days from the day the triggering sample was collected. Once the assessment and proposed corrective action schedule is approved, the timelines in the schedule become enforceable. Any changes to the corrective action schedule must be approved in writing by MassDEP. Failure to meet timelines is a treatment technique violation under the RTCR, requiring Tier 2 public notification. Corrective action schedules. When taking corrective actions, do not put in wish list items or work that you do not know you can fund because these will be enforceable. It is the PWS's responsibility to notify MassDEP when each corrective action on the schedule is completed. Common errors in corrective action schedules. Some common errors in corrective action schedules include not including issues identified in previous inspections, even when relevant to the current situation, failing to include corrective actions performed, assuming that chlorination is always sufficient, failing to include a corrective action schedule even when issues are identified, and not including dates in the corrective action schedule. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions regarding the RTCR program. But first, you may find the answers to those questions here. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the revised total coal form rule.